Patreon Q&A number 63. I want to thank all 80 of my overpowered, attractive patrons. I hope you guys know I love you by now because I'm always saying it and it's the truth. Can't thank you enough for all of your support. And to everyone else listening, there's going to be spoilers in these questions and answers, so tread carefully. Joseph K. asks, hello again, Shonen. I haven't been able to think of questions for ages, but I'm missing your passionate voice. Hey, thanks, Joseph. Uh, also, if the form of Garo that encountered Darkshine was to encounter an executive, instead... Which one do you think he'd have the best chance of defeating at his current level? No problem with any spoilers. Have a great week, man. Hey, you have a great week too, Joseph. Um, so I'm going to say if the Garo that went against Darkshine, if he went against Homeless Emperor, it would be his easiest fight for sure because he was able to already withstand the blasts of Overgrown Rover and Orochi, and that's before you know he encountered Darkshine and had that Zenkai boost in between. And I don't think Homeless Emperor's blasts are anywhere near as powerful as Orochi's, and I think they're probably below Overgrown Rover. It's not saying that Homeless Emperor's a chump, obviously he's not, but I think if he were to encounter Garo, and if he wasn't able to get a shot off on Garo immediately, like if Garo just speed, speed, uh, speed blitzed him immediately... Uh, he would just whirlwind him into pieces. But even if he did shoot him, he would just eat that blast to the face. No problem. It would probably singe him a little bit. But then he'd just go whirlwind again. He probably wouldn't even need a whirlwind. He'd probably just like a regular punch would probably like go through his chest or something like that. Who do you think is the least popular S-Class hero in the One Punch Man world? I know what your instinct will probably be Tatsumaki. But the general population of the One Punch Man world probably doesn't know her well enough to see how toxic she is. What are your thoughts? Uh, so, I don't think Tatsumaki is the least popular hero. I think anyone who's like in the top five is pretty famous. I mean, all of the S-Class heroes are famous. They're like, you know, professional athletes that are at the top of their game in our reality, more or less. But the top five are definitely well-known, especially Tatsumaki. Like, we saw like when she was going against Saitama, those people in the car recognized her. So, I mean, granted, they probably recognize almost any S-Class hero, but I think that's some indication of her popularity, you know, also that she's number two after all. But I think probably Pig God or like Drive Knight are the least popular. They just seem to be the most, the most low-key heroes. I mean, we even saw that like Zombie Man and Metal Bad have uh, merchandise and stuff, and I'm sure all of the S-Class heroes do, but I just feel like Zombie Man, uh, Pig God and Drive Knight don't get really enough attention, especially just within the series in general. Especially Drive Knight, I don't think he's going to be like on like on high key status or anything like that. Uh, and then Pig God seems the same way. So I'm gonna, my vote is for them pretty much. Brian asks, Yo Z, got a good one for you this week. What would happen if Garo from when he kills Royal Ripper ran into Fuhrer Ugly or Gumps? So I think we could probably use the Garo that fought against. Overgrown Rover for this one because there's only been like what a couple minutes in between that and yeah He did fight those three demons in between but I don't think he had like growth or whatever in between that time uh, But it is debatable if he did grow during his fight with Overgrown Rover considering how much damage he took He probably did going into his fight with Orochi to where he definitely grew but I would see that he would struggle with Fure Ugly and Gums uh, You know one at a time of course but I think he would eventually defeat them because he would grow on the fly against them because it's proven that he does. I mean, I, I don't think it's unfair to say that he's just going to grow in a fight because he's literally grown in all of the fights where he has had his back against the wall, except uh, Watchdog Man. But that's a whole different story. But I think it would be like a high diff victory, more or less, if he were to go against, probably more so against Fuhrer Ugly, considering that he has skills and he's strong and fast. Gums is kind of just like Pig God. And I think that he would have trouble, of course, but I think he would eventually overcome him. Uh, but yeah, Fuhrer Ugly would definitely give him the stronger fight and it would just push him. But I, I don't think he would lose or anything like that. He would just get really messed up. Uh, my second question is, what disaster level slash hero rank do you think Batman would be in the One Punch Man world if all he had was his regular costume and bat tools? I think he'd be at least a high demon off martial arts and physical strength. So I'm not too versed on Batman, and I know there's a whole bunch of different iterations and levels to his power, and people can just grandstand me all day on how powerful he is and how I'm underselling him and whatnot. But from what I've heard and seen, I think he's like strong enough to like bench 1,200 pounds or something or something like that, and then he could dodge bullets, maybe? I'm not sure how accurate that is because, like I said, so many different iterations, but I would say that... Uh, maybe low demon. I don't think he could be a high demon. He doesn't have, like, the strength or the speed or the durability to be that high, in my opinion. I don't think he's, like, Deep Sea King 
Uh, I mean, if he was, he wouldn't really be Batman anymore. He would be like a, a legitimate, uh, like superhuman. So I'd say being generous, give him like low demon status. Uh, but I'm sure somebody in the comments will try to set me straight. Wolf Pop, the one above all patrons, asked Konichiwa Shonen Wolf here. Do you think Drive Knight and Daedric Genos will fight in the future? Because I like to think that they will because Mr. Drive Knight sees Genos is an obstacle now. How do you think the fight with Daedric Genos and Drive Knight will go down, assuming Drive Knight doesn't have Genos' fighting information? So, I do think that this will happen. I'm actually going to make a video about this soon. I don't want to give away too much of the juicy bits of what I have entail for that video, but by the time that Drive Knight does fight Genos, I don't think he'll be Daedric anymore. I think we're just going to see Daedric for this arc, uh, and then he's definitely going to get destroyed at some point. And he will no longer be Daedric, and then he'll get an upgrade, or we can assume that it will be an upgrade after this. So he'll be something different. Maybe he'll improve to Daedric. But by the time that Genos does fight Drive Knight, I think they'll more or less be on par with each other. Meaning that Genos will probably be a high dragon by that point. And I think that he'll probably defeat Drive Knight, or at least I certainly hope that he does. Uh, but if he were to fight right now, I estimate Daedric Genos to probably not be as strong as Drive Knight at, is right now, so he would probably get beaten by uh, Drive Knight just in his gold form, if they were to fight with their Daedric uh, form. But in the future, it'll be super competitive, and I think Genos will win. Uh, and then right now, I don't think Drive Knight has Genos' information. He only really saw him stomp the, uh, the G5 uh, core robot. So I don't think he really has too much information on him. In the future, he probably will. I could totally see that happening as a future storyline or something. Sapod BS, hey Big Z, do you think that the evil natural water absorbed that oil from the sludge jellyfish? Could he become flammable? If Child Emperor somehow ignite on evil natural water, would that hurt it, have no effect, or make it stronger? Do you think Child Emperor will try this? So I think it's possible that Child Emperor might try this, given that, you know, sludge jellyfish just came out of nowhere and we know how things ended with him. So it's possible that Child Emperor just thinks like, oh, well, I blew up the Sludge Jellyfish, so let me try it on the Evil Natural Water. So given that Sludge Jellyfish somehow survived that, I'm going to assume that the Evil Natural Water would easily just tank this as well, considering that he's leagues and leagues more powerful than Sludge Jellyfish. But also, uh, the water and the oil, they don't, like, don't mix, uh, as somebody pointed out in the previous question in the Q&A. So I think it would probably make like a coating of fire or something like that. And also, uh, when Child Emperor goes more in detail in the exposition about Evil Natural Water, he says that even if you were able to burn it, it would regenerate at a faster rate than you would be able to like disintegrate it away with the fire. So even if he were to light it on fire, he would just keep absorbing water from the uh, from the air and then that would just overtake the uh, the fire and then he would just drown it out essentially even if he didn't he would kind of just have a coating of fire that would be on top of the oil and maybe he can just bring his water beneath it but either way i don't think this is a good way to take out the evil natural water but i do possibly see child emperor trying it because he's definitely out of options at this point since he doesn't have his freezing snowman lego robot anymore uh, are there any anime or manga that you like that feel are underrated for me, a series I feel is underrated is World Trigger. It is a sci-fi shonen battle manga that has what I think is the coolest power system in anime. So somebody has actually referred this to me before on the Q&A, uh, World Trigger, and I did check it out, uh, and I think it is super interesting. I think you're, the, the power system you're talking about is the trigger, right? I think that is cool how it's unique to everyone. But as for me, I think uh, I talk about this a lot on the Q&A, Giver. I think that's pretty underrated. Didn't really get its... Uh, due diligence uh, for most people in my opinion. And then another series that I feel is underrated, this might be controversial, is Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, it does have good reception, it is held in high regard, but I don't think it has enough of a good reception. Like, it's not in held in the same kind of esteem that like Naruto is, you know, series like that. I think it's almost like a perfect battle manga. The real gripe that I have with it is that it's not long enough. I feel that it can have a couple more arcs within it, and that the ending could be a little stronger, but it's not a weak ending by any means. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's just, it's so lean. It has like no fat on it, and it's so good, just so well made. 
go figure that, you know, it's Togashi after all. Nivekken asks, hey, tell me how to say your name, uh, Nivekken. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm new to the tier. I think I posted too late last time to make it in, so I'm posting it again. Hey, I'm sorry. I make these videos uh, on Sunday, so just try to get it in uh, before Sunday or Sunday morning if you can. Uh, I know you don't have Berserk in the list of animes which you are confident to talk about, but here's the question. How would you compare the Jigentao that Kuwabara has against the sort of accuation that Skull Knight has? So I actually looked up this sword, and it's pretty insane. So by virtue of being comprised of numerous molten Beherits, I looked up what Beherits are. They're like the supernatural things that... Those little face things. Uh, the Beherit Sword is likewise capable of reaching into the deepest depths of the astral world. It can also be used to tear open intermental portals leading to other locations within the physical world, allowing the well-nigh instant travel. A space distorting sword stroke dealt by the Beherit Sword splintered Ganishka's twice reincarnated form and brought about the great roar of the astral world. So Ganishka is a pretty powerful character from what I've seen. So I guess that proves that it can be used against super powerful characters and it can rip through essentially space and time and can cut through what their astral world is. This is more or less exactly the same thing that the Dimension Sword that Kuwabara has. Uh, it's difficult to say which one is more powerful. I think Berserk, I'm not sure what their power scale is, but considering how powerful the Ganishka guy is that I read up, he seems to be like an S-Class Demon, just taking a guess. And I'm sure that Kuwabara Sword can cut an S-Class Demon too, even though it has been proven, unfortunately. But they're actually very similar, because the Astral World is essentially Spirit World or Demon World. And if he can cut through space in the physical world, that's exactly what Kuwabara can do. Uh, but it says that Kuwabara Sword can essentially, uh, in theory, cut through literally anything.
I assume that maybe this uh, this sword can as well. The sword evacuation. So the comparison is there. They're basically like the same thing, and I think it's awesome. Also, the art uh, by Mura is incredible in um, Berserk. That's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Once again, I want to thank all 80 of my ultra cool, super powerful patrons. Guys, I love you, and I can't thank you enough for all of your support. If you would like to be in next week's Q&A, simply check out the Patreon. The $5 tier will give you access to this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.